Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, I, I actually really appreciate it. <laughs> I wasn't sure how, how many would return. Um, I'm hoping that um, you weren't crying too much last night and that you were actually pretty excited and um, you were able to explore um, more um, with your screencast. So here's part two. Um, we'll do a quick introduction. I'm going to do a very brief review, very, very brief, um, just to, if anybody was here, not here yesterday, just kind of, you know, maybe they can catch up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go through the toolbar with you. Um, I'm probably assuming that a lot of you kind of used it a little bit last night or yesterday when you did your homework. Um, so uh, you, you'll probably be familiar with it. Hopefully I can give you some tips um, and some new information. Um, we're going to talk about sharing, the different ways that you can share. And then if we have time, um, I, I would like to do some show and tell. Um, I received some screencasts from some of you and um, I, I literally tears were coming into my eyes. They were so good. I was so excited and happy um, to see your products. And so I just wanted to share a few with you. And then, um, at, you know, always, it doesn't have to be at the end, but um, always Q&A. Um, if you have questions throughout the whole presentation, then please um, put them in the Q&A. If you have a comment, put them in the chat. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so this is me, um, same from yesterday, <laughs> same Garden Grove, woo -woo, Garden Grove peeps. Um, I've been with OTAN for about three years, and this is the first time I'm doing the Screencastify session. So um, timing might be a little bit off or, you know, if you feel like there's not enough information or too much information, please, please, please write those things in the, in the evaluations um, because that will help me to, to pump up or, you know, bring down uh, for, for the future. Okay. All right. So one minute. Um, what were some of the challenges that you faced while making your screencast? So if you could put that in the chat, not the Q&A, in the chat. Um, you know, just brief challenges that you faced. Oh, running out of time. <laughs> that five minutes does go by fast. Oh, somebody was asking, uh, somebody commented about not being able to put a comment on the thing. Um, I think with the premium, if you pay for the $29 a year, you're actually able to um, put text on your videos. That's one of the features. Um, so that might help you. Um, you know, a little bit more for those bells and whistles. Um, $29 a year, uh, not too bad for, for, you know, being able to, I didn't put it in the slides and I wish, and now I kind of wish I did, but um, some of the other bells and whistles where you can merge two screencasts together, you can um, trim, like in, in the free version, you can only trim the front end and the back end, but with the premium, you can um, trim in the middle. So if you do make a mistake, like in the middle, instead of starting all over again, you just keep continuing the recording. And then when you get to the part that you don't like in the editing, you just trim that off. So that's kind of a bonus. Yeah, somebody, uh, Wendy is asking, saying that um, she wishes she could see the time. There is a place, I think you have to hover over like your screen or something. And I think a time does come up, like a timer. Uh, near the toolbar. Um, I remember seeing it a few times, but I, I don't really pay attention to it, so I'm not sure. Um, okay, so, um, oh, Donna, I kept a stopwatch nearby. That was really smart. See, she's way smarter than I am. She thinks of things like that, and I just don't. <laughs> I end up, um, I think if, if anybody has gotten to the five minute mark, you'll see it all of a sudden. It says, you have, you know, five seconds left, and then you're not, you know, you're not even close to being done, and then you're all, like, oh man, you know, but I appreciate the comments. Um, I will take a look at them. Can we edit in? Oh, Edpuzzle, I don't know. That might be somebody, if somebody else um, knows more about Edpuzzle, um, the question is, can we edit in Edpuzzle after completion? I, I know nothing about Edpuzzle, so I don't even know how to answer that question. Um, so anyways, okay, so great. I, I didn't really get a chance to read all of them because it was going so fast, but I'm gonna move on. And um, again, if you have questions or something, put them in the Q&A. All right, so for those of you who were not here yesterday, um, this, is, this is your opportunity to take a picture of this screen right here, um, because this will tell you step-by-step step how to install Screencastify. Um, and then that way, when after this, or if you wanna work uh, simultaneously, um, you can go ahead all the extension um, onto your computer. It is not 
mobile, mobile device friendly though. So you, you must use a desktop or a laptop. Okay. Um, so take a picture of this if you want. Oh, yesterday people were asking about how do you take a photo of your screen? And um, so there's a couple of choices. You can actually take your phone and take a photo. Um, if you're on your phone, you can take a screenshot if you know how to do that. Um, or if you're on your laptop, um, if you're on Windows, you can use the Snippet tool, which is part of uh, Microsoft. Uh, it's, in, it's under Accessories. Um, if you're on a Chromebook, it's Control, Shift, and the key above the number six. So those are all different ways that you can make screenshots and stuff. And, and people were asking yesterday about that too. They were um, asking about how do I make all these screenshots, um, like this one, for example. Um, all right, uh, so I'm gonna take this away. Three, two, one. All right, so real quick before I get started, um, are there any questions or things I can answer right now? Hey, Lisa, this is Anthony. Um, hi, Anthony. Hi, everyone. You know, there were a few people who were still having, you know, they're still putting their, um, some of the questions they had or problems they had with setup. So I'm wondering if, um, and maybe Melinda could just jump in for a second, because this is a Chrome extension. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of the, maybe somebody can just address that real quick, like why some people um, were still having trouble, you know, trying to, trying to add the extension. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe some people were signed into a district Gmail account rather than a personal Gmail account. So I'm wondering if maybe we could just address that for maybe a second or two. Yeah, uh, Melinda, if you have any insights on why you would think somebody might have difficulties. Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay, if you're using a district account, um, they can preclude you from adding extensions on your Chrome. So if you sign into your account, um, let's say that Elisa had a ggusd.net, and that would be a G Suite's account. Uh, she, would, she might not be able to add extensions when she signed in with that account. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is sign out of that account and then sign in with your at gmail.com and you'll be able to do everything that you want to do unless, <laughs> unless you're using a district laptop because they, there are restrictions on the back end as well. Yeah, um, I'm going to chime in real quick. I mean, I can only speak for Garden Grove, but I know this for a fact. Um, so for my Garden Grove peeps, if you have one of the Chromebooks that was issued to you um, from Garden Grove, most likely the Chromebook will not allow you to um, add the extension. Or if you did it on another computer, like your personal computer, you won't see them if you use the, the Garden Grove um, um, Chromebooks. Chromebooks, thank you. Um, so I mean, that might, be, that might be one of the issues also. Right. So even so, if you are able to get the extension on a different one, you won't be able to see it on the school issued Chromebook. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other, you know, it's basically the, the club and the pub. Um, if, uh, if they decide that you can have extensions, they might actually decide which extensions you can have. Yeah. So they will push out, there we go. We've got someone from Roland that said uh, they, the, they already pushed out the Screencastify extension with unlimited recording. That's very cool. Yeah. So, and it could be that your district doesn't realize that you're not able to install extensions. So you might need to call somebody and ask them. Mm -hmm. There was also something in the Q&A, Elisa. I don't know if you've experienced this or maybe when you first started using Screencastify about um, Google needing permission to access all your computer data and change it. It's the big scary message when you start using extensions. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday because I had a screenshot of it about a read and change um, data, um, something, mm -hmm. something, you know, um, and we talked about it and I actually looked it up to see what that meant. And so we kind of talked about it yesterday. And okay. so people, some of them that didn't were having difficulties using the, the extension. And so they went back and did it again. And then they said it was fine. Right. So, it, and basically what, what the extensions are asking for is read, write access to your Google Drive. I have never had any problems with any extension doing anything to anywhere on my Google Drive ever. But if they're not allowed to save the video to your drive, then there's nowhere to put it. Mm -hmm. If um, they're using some space on your drive in order for you to use the extension. So you can say no, that's fine. 
but you're going to find that you're not able to use it as well. So I, I don't know, Anthony, is that, do you think that's enough to answer the questions? Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. I think okay. that I'm hoping that these are the issues that folks ran into. Yeah. Um, there were a few people who were still, you know, I noticed in the comments and Q&A that they were saying, you know, I still couldn't get it installed or yeah. I was running into trouble, you know, getting it onto my computer. So right. I'm hoping that we address some of those issues. And we do realize too, with the cold pub and club thing, that's a whole nother component yeah. that may um, be a barrier for some people. Right. So, I mean, I was, I'm on a, I'm on a, a laptop, a district issued laptop, and I was able to um, install the extension on my Garden Grove um, account as well as a Gmail. So, hands on on your district and where they decide to put in the the blocks and stuff. So, yeah, I, I hope that was. I, I'm not hoping that was your problem, but I hope that that you understand that that could be your problem and why you weren't able to do it. Um, yesterday we talked about working with multiple tabs. Um, I hope that you found that that was useful um, when you were maybe doing a demonstration or a how-to video and you had to go from tab to tab to tab. Um, just having those tabs in an order, it really helps um, ease into your um, screencast. Um, side by side. Yesterday, if you weren't here, we were talking about side by side views, like Linda explained earlier. Um, you know, you could have your Zoom on one side and then um, your screencast, or if you're just installing on the right hand side. Um, also, if you're on, if you're new today and you weren't here yesterday, you might want to have your Zoom, this presentation on your phone, and then you're working in Screencastify on a laptop or a desktop. Um, we talked to you a little bit yesterday. I hope some of you had the time or you were able to kind of go through the tutorials and the introductions of Screencast and maybe that answered some of your questions too or, hey, I didn't know I could do that. Um, if not, go back. Um, when you go into your account, screencastify.com, and you go into your account, you'll see a lot of different resources and we'll talk a little bit about that more later on. Um, so again, if you're new, screencastify.com. So everybody, if you've installed it, you should have it ins already installed. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the tools that are available uh, as well. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Yesterday we got a comment about this privacy and security, and Anthony was so sweet, and he like, researched it, and I found it in the uh, resources. Um, they have a whole thing about privacy and security, and so I just kind of wanted to um, check in with you and show this and then there's actually a learn more and there was a whole it was a really long list uh, of things that they go through to make sure that um, everything is um, secure and private so thank you Elizabeth for that all right so again you know if you're in a presentation with your students um, you know you might want to have these break slides in there I have found I had never done it before until just recently um, and I kind of have found that they're very useful and and a lot of people comment on them uh, in the evaluations they're like i really like those break slides um you know whatever the break is and so you know just something to think about especially with your students because this is all new for them also if they're using a computer or their phone and if they're on it for a long time their eyes are going to start getting tired their neck their back so just being able to take a deep breath or stretch a little bit would really help them out um all right so the toolbar so Yesterday, I gave some misinformation because that was my own ignorance about the toolbar. I was under the impression that it only works with the browser tab because I thought that my impression was that if you have it on the desktop, it was too much information for it to go back and forth. But I have found that I am wrong. So um, here's what I thought yesterday. If you're on the browser tab, then you get your toolbar. But uh, yesterday, I was actually making a screencast for one of the participants. I was replying to one of the comments that they made, and I was making a demonstration video, and I had the desktop enabled, and suddenly my toolbar appeared. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. So I thought maybe I had some magical powers, or, you know, they decided because I was so awesome that they would just grant me, you know, some premium tool or not. Well, that wasn't the case. I found out later on. But it was nice to... Uh, think that for a few minutes all right I went on I finally clicked on this little um, warning this little error thing on the bottom where it says you know you, your 
tools are unable, you know, unavailable. And I finally clicked on it, and it tells you why. And um, and so it's basically saying like if um, it's you can't do it on a live website, and then they kind of explain what a live website is. I, I'm not going to go too much into it, but just know that um, there's a couple of things that you can do to um, to have a toolbar come up. And I think if you're going from uh, from tabs, if you get to a new tab, once it becomes not a, a new tab, if you click on it, then the toolbar will appear. So I hope that helps. Um, again, so here's the simple workaround. And let's see if it will play. So in your, um, when you first open a screencast, you click on your little icon. You can go into the skinny, um, the hamburger on the left, and you'll get um, options. Here we go. I, ha I do have a video, so just a second. There's no sound on this. This is just a, a GIF. You want to make sure that that toolbar is shown. And so you're going to go to the more options, and then you'll see down here in the middle, enable the toolbar. So you'll always want to make sure that that's um, checked off. And I think on default it is, but sometimes you may not want to. And sometimes you may not want to have the toolbar there. If it's in the way or if you don't ever use it, don't have it on there because it might be a distraction to your students or to whoever's watching your screencast. Okay, so now we're going into the um, actual toolbar, and I, I'm hoping that you had a chance to play with it a little bit. If not, they're there. Um, when I do screencasts, I think because I can't multitask it too well at the same time, so I tend to forget that it's there until it's too late, like I'm already talking on the screen, and then I go, oh yeah, the, you know, and I go down and I scroll to the spotlight and then I come back up. Um, but I think the more that I play with this, you know, the more familiar I will be, it'll be easier and more effortless. So the first tool that's in the toolbar is the spotlight. Uh, well, at first you'll, you might only just see the bottom row, but if you hover over it, these three will come up. And this is the spotlight, and you'll see this is like a little demonstration. It, it pretty much does what it says. <laughs> it spotlights wherever your cursor is. The next one is hide cursor. So if you are maybe showing a video or you don't want this arrow in the middle of the screen, you know, you can always move it down. But it, if you click on this hide cursor, if you just have your, your mouse still for a, a second or so, it will disappear. And then as soon, just like that, like how my cursor just disappeared. And then if you move it again, it, it reappears. So that might be a handy tool to have if you um, don't want to have your cursor shown. The next one is the highlight click. Okay, so anytime that you're actually clicking, so I, I was clicking here to enlarge uh, an image, and when you do, it makes a round halo, uh, a red halo around it, and that draws the attention. So students or whoever can look to see exactly where you are. Because sometimes your mouse, like when I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, see here and here's here, and the, you know, it's too fast. So if it has a red halo, then um, then the eye can draw to it quicker. Um, pause, pretty self-explanatory, but um, so as you were, as I was doing a screencast, I was playing around with these, and I hit pause, and my toolbar changed. So once you hit the pause, <clears throat> excuse me, then your toolbar changes a little bit. You end up having the play, which is the opposite of pause, so you can play your video again. You can stop your video, which is um, ending it or you can redo it, you can restart. It's called restart, and you're like, oh, I messed up, I'm just gonna do it again. Instead of, instead of ending it, you can just say restart, and it'll start your recording. It'll go three, two, one, and then you can, re, re, you can begin again. So that's really helpful. Um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, so you can end the video, and then you can record from the beginning. The mouse pointer, that's just this. So whenever you're um, using other tools, when you uh, want to go back to your mouse, you're gonna have to go back to the um, mouse pointer. The toolbar pen, so here's the pen, pretty self-explanatory. Again, you can choose your colors, 
But here's something that you may not know, which I found out, which is amazing. You, oops, let's go back. You can um, make the pen thicker or thinner by using the arrow keys on your computer, on your keyboard. So it defaults at a certain font, at a certain width. And then if you increase it, if you use the arrow up, it makes it fatter. And if you use the arrow down, it makes it skinnier. So I thought that was pretty cool. So sometimes you don't want it as thick or sometimes you want it thicker and you can um, change that. So same thing with the erase. So here's the eraser. Um, again, you can make the erase smaller. You can make it medium or you can make it really big. So I just wanted to demonstrate like I just used that. Now, if you want, if you don't want to go erase, 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 you just, you're like, I want everything gone. Alt Z or option Z, it will wipe out the whole um, annotation, not your screen or anything, just the annotation, whatever you use with your pens. So I thought that was pretty cool too, because it doesn't really explain that on the toolbar. So I hope those were helpful hints. Um, that really helped me a lot. Um, here is your embed um, camera. So this is what we talked a little bit about yesterday about being mindful about when you want to be in the video and when you don't want to be in the video. Um, so if you are giving a demonstration and you have a worksheet or you have a website that you're showing, um, sometimes you do want to have your face on there so that you're explaining something and the students can see you and maybe you're making some hand gestures or whatever. And then now it's time to focus on the actual worksheet you can toggle onto that camera and it takes you off of your screencast and now you can focus directly onto the subject of your screencast, so the worksheet and things. So you can use your pens and, and all that stuff. So um, just kind of be mindful about maybe sometimes not always being on the camera and not always not being on the camera. I mean, uh, yeah, not being on, the, on camera. Um, and then the X is to hide the toolbar. It's not ending your screencast. So um, remember that too. So if, you, if you're thinking you're done and you're like, oh, X, it, that's only hiding your toolbar. You're not finishing your um, screencast. Um, any, is this a good time to stop and ask for questions or comments? Yes, Elisa. So, um, okay. So some people are still having trouble seeing their toolbar. So can you remind us again, first of all, how do we enable the toolbar? And then, um, then how do we get it to show? And then if you happen to hide your toolbar, how do you get it back? I, okay. I met, <laughs> I'm so glad somebody asked it, but I'm so sad that somebody asked it because I, I meant to look into that because I was thinking that myself because I don't ever get rid of it. But I was thinking, if I did, how do I do? There is a um, there is a shortcut, and and I'm going to show you a link to show what all the shortcuts are. But I think you have to. I think, unless somebody can tell me differently, um, I think you have to use the shortcut to get the tool back, uh, the toolbar back. So that that I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't follow through on what I wanted to do with that. Um, as far as making sure that the toolbar comes, um, number one, make sure you're not on a new tab. Um, and let me go back to that one. I'm sorry, I'm scrolling back here. Um, they'll give you a list. Okay, so if you're on a blank new tab, right? So if you click new tab and you're on Google or you know whatever the home page is, it will not show up there. Um, any URLs that begin with Chrome, um, the Chrome Web Store. Okay, so if 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 that helps, if that helps any of your issues that might be the reason why your toolbar is not coming up. The other thing is if um, you need to make sure when you're um, at the very beginning, when you make your screencast, you click on the screencast icon and you hit the more options, then you're going to want to um, make sure that that toggle is on. There's a little place that says, more options than it says right here enabling toolbars you want to make sure that's on so double check those are your troubleshooting those are your troubleshooting tips so i hope that answers that'll help for everybody uh anything else or what else um let me see here so um somebody suggested control t mm -hmm. for shortcut is that what you said 
Oh, I don't know what it does, but. Oh, oh, for the toolbar. Yes, that could that could work. Control T. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, thank okay. you, thank you. Okay. So yeah, if you exit out of the toolbar, and now you're like, oh, I want the toolbar back, then yeah, Control T. Okay. Oh, thank you. That was awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, and then Elisa again, how come? Um, when somebody's looking at their toolbar, they can't see those top three icons. Oh, when you're just looking, like if the toolbar appears and you're like, oh, there's the toolbar. When you hover over it, the top three will show up. Okay. Um, so Elisa, it's, uh, I want to step back a, a second here. So can you click on a website mm -hmm. and play a video that mm -hmm. you then comment on? So maybe, the, maybe the ver there's a video on a website. And you just want, you like maybe for your students to watch the video, but then you also want to comment on the video. So could you make a screencast yeah. of that? Yes. So you're going to have to, it's two steps. You'll have to screencast the video. So play the video and then screencast it and, and then put that in a slide or, or something. And then screencast yourself, um, you know, play the video again and screencast. Excuse me, I'm going to come. <coughs> And, um, and then you can make your comments, your, your annotations um, as you're watching the video. And then that's a screencast of you talking about that video. Does, do you think that answered what they were looking for? I believe so. Yeah. So it is possible is what you're saying. Yes. So it's, it's um, I think I might have done that yesterday with the um, screencast video. I screencast their actual tutorial and then I had me on the side. And so it was a video of a video. It was a screencast of a screencast. Okay. Um, okay. Another question. How do you show something you have saved on your computer that you want to talk over? Um, okay. So um, it depends on what it is that's saved on your computer. I would either have the whatever it is on my screen and then start Screencastify and then talk about it. So just pull it up from your, from your um, downloads um, and then screencastify and then talk about it. Um, or if you want to show students how to get to those things on their computer, then you would start from an empty desktop and then screencastify and then show them where they can find it on their desktop. Once, um, so we have somebody who wanted to include a YouTube video song, but the song was very echoey. Oh. Oh, the, the original video was not, but when they did the screencast, it was? I'm not sure. It, she I, just I, said I wanted to include a video song. Um, this happened to me, too, because I did the same thing. Because I thought, oh, I have my headphones in, and I heard it so clearly. So I hit Screencastify. And then when I went to go watch my Screencastify, it was um, silent <laughs> because the headphones didn't pick up on this thing. So I had to unplug my my headphones and then screencastify so it was using my computer speakers and then when i watched it again it was echoey um there it you might not have a go there might not be a, a wraparound from that um unless you just try to minimize the sound in the room um just try to make you know like there's no um you're not in a big spacious room or things and then just try to surround the sound in your computer as much as possible and that might help with the the clarity um, we'll take a couple more here. So okay. we have somebody who tr who w was using their webcam, okay, mm -hmm. but they wanted to move the webcam around as they were making the recording. So maybe, for example, like you know, maybe um, as the as the recording was going, maybe it was blocking something that they wanted the students to be able to see. So they wanted to move the webcam around, mm -hmm. but um, it didn't seem to go as well as this person thought it might go. Um, I've had a little bit of issues because when you watch the video from Screencastify, he does it fairly effortlessly. And um, so this is, she's talking about when you're um, embedding, not, not just webcam, because webcam is just a selfie video, but when you embed um, your webcam into your, um, let's say your, this picture, for example, um, as I was recording, um, 
Oh, okay. So two things. Okay. So mine is a little different though, because I did a screencast and I, I inserted it in here. I didn't do it at the same time. So that's actually, sorry, that's not going to be. So if, if I had this picture and I did a screencast right now, oh, let's see if I can do it. Let me just exit out of this. Um, if I hit screencast. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm on a computer that doesn't have a webcam. But if I had, if I was in, in enabling my webcam here, um, uh, supposedly when it comes up, your the video I think defaults right here in this lower corner, and then you're you should be able to move it and adjust the size so that it's not hiding things you know beneath it. Mm -hmm. um, but. But I, I did do it yesterday a little bit, and it was, there was a little trouble when I was moving it. And it could have been maybe my internet connection, too. That so could I, be it. Alisa, I think that, um, so Mario, I think, is giving us the answer to this question. <gasps> oh, and great. he suggests that you have to click and grab from the middle of the webcam. So don't grab a corner. Oh. Grab the middle of the webcam, and that okay. might make it smoother. Oh, great. That's good. Thank you, Mario. Um, yeah, to move it around. And then once you have it in place, then maybe use the corners or the side to um, resize um, because you can actually make it skinnier, you know, fatter, longer, shorter. Um, but yeah, great. That that's good advice. I might have been, yeah, I, I might have been grabbing it more here, and it may not have been as effort. Uh, it might have been more effort. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. Um, now we have another uh, question. Somebody, you know, everybody's using Zoom these days. So yes. somebody thought, well, why don't I make a screencastify of Zoom, right? So mm -hmm. I can show my students how to use Zoom, mm -hmm. how to use the controls. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't seem to work very well. And is, is this what you just talked about in your slides, Alisa? Is this, a, is this a possible reason for why um, when you're trying to capture something live like that, that it, it's not really working? It doesn't really work that well? Um. No, it shouldn't because this. we're in. I'm in Zoom right now, and I'm able to make a screencast, and it's being recorded. Um, it, there might be just too many elements going on, or um, yeah. It okay. So if you're trying to screencast a Zoom meeting, or you're just trying to do like an informational, like how to teach your students how to get to Zoom. I think it's more when you're within when you're actually using Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, like to show students how to um, put something into the chat, how to open up the Q&A if you're using it, um, mm -hmm. maybe some of the participant controls. So I think it's more of that kind of uh, wanting to capture that kind of information. Um, yeah, so I, I would just be in a Zoom, you know, open up your Zoom room and um, as if you were in a meeting or, you know, if you're with your students, then just hit the screencast. Just make sure you're not in full screen. You have to be off screen because you have to be able to see your screencast icon. And then once you hit that, then you can go back to full screen and then use the screencast to go around your Zoom room and show them all the different tools. Um, is there a way you can add a background behind your profile picture like Zoom? So I guess maybe oh, in the, in yeah, the when webcam. you're doing a webcam. <laughs> Um, I don't think I don't I haven't I haven't looked into that, but um, <laughs> you might want to just stand in front of a picture or a poster. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a virtual background, but but I, again, I can't say that for sure because I've never even looked into that. <laughs> and then somebody asked, "How can I make a black screen?" Do you have any thoughts about that? Black a, screen? A black screen? Oh, so like if you want to just do um, audio only, maybe. Perhaps. Um, yeah, then I would just have maybe open up a, um, like a Google slide and just make a, a black slide and then do your screencast with the narration. Yeah, that's why it's totally black. And then you can um, just have your narration and then you can just always do um, export to audio only. So then they don't even see the, the black if, if you don't want or if you want them to see something. Um, when I did my listening test, I was thinking about that also, but I didn't want just a blank color. And so I actually put a little picture. So they're looking at something, but they're listening. It, but it was a, a very neutral picture. And um, 
but then they they heard my voice so i i for me that worked i, I liked having them look at something versus nothingness but yeah uh, for black screen that's what i would suggest okay um right. let's see can we take a, just a couple more and then we'll okay. then you continue on sure um can you review how to switch the sound off and on in your embedded video? Embedded video. Um, switch the sound, like as you're recording? Well, you showed mute, us Like a, mute, unmute? Well, you did show us a recording where there was no sound, right? Oh, because but there then, was just no sound. Okay. Yeah. So, so as you're making your recording, could you, so could you make a yeah. recording where Let's you're see. talking some of the time, then not talking, then talking, um, then continue talking? That's a good question. Let's see here. Oh, so here's your microphone. Um, so if, if I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, especially if you're, we're going to talk about this too, if you're going to make a GIF, you probably want to turn your microphone off because you don't want to have any sounds because it's just usually movement. Um, and so I would just toggle this off and there's no microphone now. Um, and then I would make a screencast. But um, as far as the microphone, let me see. If, no, these are just your, your, your um, different microphones that you have available. Um, as far as within a screencast, I'm not sure if there's, I don't remember seeing anything where you can toggle on and off between um, a mic, you know, sound and no sound. It's something that you're gonna have to choose right then and there from the beginning. So we're down to sharing now. <clears throat> and some of you um, did an awesome job. I, I, uh, I received some, some of your screencasts in my Gmail yesterday um, and uh, they, they turned out great. Um, so as you notice, as soon as you hit stop recording, there's nothing to do. It's already saved into your drive. Um, and so that's one of the things that's really, really nice. So you don't even have to think about it. It's already there. Um, so they do save as a web.m and I am not a techie at all. I, like this was not in my field. And so I had to Google this too. And so what it says, it's, it's an open source file that can be viewed straight from a browser. So I, that's, that's what it means. So you'll, you'll see your, the name of your um, screencast and then it's like web.m. So that's what it, it's instead of DOC or, or whatever it is. Um, so it can be used. The yes, one of the questions yesterday was, can you watch screencasts from your phone? The answer is yes, because I did it yesterday. I got, I had, I opened up my email from my phone. Somebody sent me a screencast. I turned it on and I can watch it from my phone. So, and I have an Android. So I, that, that worked for me. Um, if anybody else was having some problems, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I can answer them or not. Um, copy and paste the link. That's this one. That's the easiest way. If, if you do nothing else, you finish your screencast, you copy the link and you email it to somebody. That, I mean, that's as good as that. Um, just be mindful, the longer the videos, the, the longer it'll take to kind of um, boost, you know, into your, so sometimes you'll have it and then it'll say, video not available yet, or processing, please wait, or try again. So just kind of be patient if they're somewhat longer. The next one is to YouTube. <clears throat> Two things with YouTube, you need to have an account, but not only do you need to have an account, you need to have a channel, okay? So if you have Gmail or um, a G Suite, you automatically have a, a YouTube account, but you'll need to develop or create a YouTube channel. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Um, I do have, um, I mean, uh, Jennifer from OTAN has done a wonderful, wonderful, tons of tutorials on YouTube in itself. Um, OTAN website has resources. Um, so please, uh, if you think that you might want to have a YouTube channel and this is the, a good venue for um, placing your videos so that your students have access to them, then, uh, then go into that and um, look into that and see how easy it is. If you want to publish to YouTube, you're going to go ahead and click on that. And then it'll ask you, it defaults to private, which means that only you can see. Um, so if, if there's going to be some editing to be done and you don't want anybody to see it yet, that's probably what you are going to want to keep. If you, if there are no editing, to, you know, if you don't want to edit anything and it's ready to go just as it is, you're going to need to change it to public. Otherwise, nobody else is going to be able to see it unless they have the link. So <clears throat> change that to public and then you're going to upload. 
and it's as easy as that. I mean, I did it, and like four seconds later, I went to my YouTube channel, and there it was. So that was kind of nice. Um, I know I kind of went through that real fast. If you have more questions about YouTube, um, it, we'll try to do it later on. But if it's more about YouTube itself, then we're going to have to refer it to like maybe another YouTube session. Um, Google Classroom, if you have a classroom or if you just created one, um, you can upload to a classroom seamlessly. You click on the Share Classroom. This is what comes up. It'll ask you to choose what class, if you have multiple. I, I have two classes, so I chose this one. It'll choose, ask you to choose an action. So do you want a, an assignment, a question, an announcement, create material? I chose an uh, assignment. Uh, you hit go. Um, the first time it comes up, you'll get this little prompt. So just say, got it. And then here's your assignment. And then you, um, this is the this is the screencast right here. I didn't name it because I was just playing around. But if you had named it, you know, um, vocabulary practice, it would say vocabulary practice right here. And then you go through your assignment as if you were, as if any other assignment. And again, um, if you're having trouble with this, if it's more of a classroom issue, um, you're gonna we'll probably address it in a classroom session. But if it's actually about the screencast into the classroom, then we'll talk about it later. Embedding the code, um, <laughs> I wrote on here because I don't know what this means, <laughs> but I think people who have a website, maybe this is what you would use. I, I don't use this, but this is what it looks like. I clicked on it and this is what I got. Excuse me. And um, so I assume that you're going to copy this and put it wherever you need to put it, but I, I don't speak that lingo, so I don't really know too much about it. Sorry. Uh, Gmail, sending it because this is a Google product, um, it automatically goes seamlessly into a Gmail. I hit send in email. Now, what happens is it generates an email for you, a new email from the account that your Screencastify was opened. So my Screencastify account is linked with my alisa.takeuchi at gmail.com. So when I hit send email, this is what it comes up. Okay, and if I want to send it from this email, that's great. But when I'm using it with my students, I don't use this email address. I have a totally different Gmail account with my students. So <clears throat> I don't use um, this particular tool. I'm sorry. <coughs> with, um, I don't use this particular tool with my students, but with um, some of you that I, I contacted last night, um, this is exactly what I did. Um, so with my students, because I have a different account, I created a, I created an email already. This is my, my email to my students. And then I'm going to hit the um, drive button at the very bottom. There's a whole bunch of tools at the bottom of your email. I hit the drive and then my learning chocolate comes right up and I inserted it and it, and it comes into the, the email. So that was pretty easy. Um, I think I might have, yeah. So here's that email. I took a screenshot. <clears throat> so here are all my students. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> my gosh, my voice is a drive. Um, here's that email. And then I would insert here, I would insert a file using drive. I would probably go to recent because it's one of the things that I did recently. Now again, if it's a longer video and you try to do this right away, it won't work because it's still processing. So just give it a few minutes or keep hitting refresh or do some, you know, doing something like that. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work. And um, it will, um, it, you'll see it and then you just hit select and then it, it pops right up. So it really is that easy when you use the, the Gmail more so if you're using the same account as your Screencastify. <clears throat> Excuse me. The QR code, it's the very last one. This generates a QR code, and this is what the, um, the prompt will come up when you, when, you tap, when you tap that. So you can either copy this code and then paste it onto a document or worksheet, or you can download it and it'll save to your computer. 
I don't know if a lot of people still use QR codes. I know it was kind of big at some at one point. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people still use them. Maybe you know, like on your websites and stuff. Tell tell us again about are there privacy settings for the video? Um, there is yes. When you go into when you're on the screencastify.com, okay, and um, you go into I believe it's resources. Um, there's a section in there that'll talk to, or in, and it might be at the very bottom of the screen. Also, when you're on the very on screencastify.com, at the very bottom, you'll you might see a privacy settings or security issues or FAQ, and um, they can go to that. Um, I asked because somebody said, um, I copied the link, I sent it to my boss and to me. Um, this person didn't oh. have any issues, but she, but the boss was not unable to see the video. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know exactly. Okay, so I'm not too sure why they wouldn't have been able to watch it, especially if they're on a browser. It should be because it's, if it's a WM, if it's a web.m uh, file still, then um, they should be able to use it on any browser. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure about why why he wouldn't why the boss wouldn't be able to watch it. So somebody asked this question: Do you have to change the privacy settings if you um, are linking to the video that's sitting in a drive? I did not. I, I have not had to do anything with privacy, like nothing. And because and and we were talked about it a little bit yesterday. You know, embarrassingly enough, I, I don't really pay attention too much of it, which is not a good thing, but I admit to it. And I have not had to do anything. I haven't had a toggle or click or anything with any kind of privacy issues. There was a, there's been a lot of discussion in the chat about, I mm -hmm. think, trying to take a video of a video. And oh, so a video I think people have a lot of suggestions about um, what that, what those issues might be. I was thinking about that too later on as we were moving, as I was moving along. Um, if you, if you are, if you are watching a video and you hit Screencastify with your, with your uh, camera embedded, you could probably narrate it as it's, as you, you wouldn't have to do the Screencastify of the video and then go back. You could probably just watch the video and, and talk about the video as it's playing. I, I, I don't see why not. I don't think I've ever done it, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. And do you find that um, if you, like you were telling us about how you could be play, you could play a video mm -hmm. and then have your webcam then go back and, you know, comment on the video as the video is playing. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you find the quality of all of this video that you're shooting? Like, do you find that as you if you add that webcam component that it lessens the video quality of the original video, or things are get messed up at all? Like, how do you what's your yeah. experience been? Yeah, no, that's a really really good question, and um, I haven't done that yet. Like, I just thought of it right now because most of the time what I've done is I had a video and I screencasted that. Well, okay, so I screencasted that video and the quality did go down, but I haven't watched a video and then screencast at the same time as that video was playing, if that makes sense. So I did the two-stepper, which is like, you know, a roundabout way and the quality went down. But if I would have just watched the video and then hit Screencastify at the same time, I, I'm sure that the quality would be probably just as good. Okay. Um... Yeah, so for example, somebody, I, maybe somebody tried this for their homework last night. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to use the tools as you are presenting a Google slide presentation? So um, this person said, even though I embedded the webcam, it wasn't visible when I presented my slides. I think it falls into, well, I don't know if it falls into, um, into one of those live you know, like the live, whatever those three. Those three I, conditions I, yeah, I don't. Us. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the answer to that right off the top of my head. Okay. Oh, um, we got a clarification about the privacy settings. Mm, good. Well, oh, sorry. This is privacy settings in Google. Oh. So they're under the file. Once you click on the video to open it, then you go to three little dots on the top right. Click on that, then choose advanced, and you'll be able to configure your privacy settings on that particular video. So maybe hmm. if people are maybe still having it, it mm -hmm. like if you're sending it and people are still not being able, not able to see it. Yeah, it could be a Chrome settings or a Google settings on their end. Okay. 
Um, oh, she said, sorry, click on the three dots, then share, then advance. This may have may go back to when you're talking about the toolbar originally. Um, do you understand this question? Does pay annotation stay in place or move when scrolling a page? They, uh, I believe they stay in place. So like if I go from one slide to another slide, they stay with that slide. We can, I can try it, Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get some new. And then, um, Alisa, while you're working on that, um, mm -hmm. so does Screencastify work on iPads? Like if you're trying to create iPad, iPad um, no, Screencastify? No, I, I, I believe that it doesn't work on any mobile device. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're pretty adamant about that. Like they specifically say desktop and top. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a slide and I just opened up a new slide. I'm going to screencast. And I'll do browser tab. Uh, I'll do desktop. Okay, so let's see um, if the annotations will stay. Or do they go? Um, so you have to go back to the arrow so that you can move your slide to the next one. And no, so they don't move. I don't know if that was the question or not. Oh, it did for a moment. Um, but the, the pen stayed. So I hope that helps. So like if you're on a, a Word document or something or, you know, some sort of document and you want to get rid of them, you, you move on to something else, your, your annotations won't stay on your screen. Does that help? I, wanna, um, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Oh, so this is I don't like just just a teachable moment here. So right away, I know I know I don't want to keep this. I'm just going to trash it. <laughs> I don't have it kept. I just you know let let it go, and then um, it has all my other ones, and I just let the screen go too. So. If you're in, in that position where you were making a you know, one video, but you had to make it a bunch of different times, a lot of different takes, you don't want to keep saving all those junky ones. Just trash them because otherwise you're going to get confused on which one was the good one. Okay. And Elisa, you actually just made a desktop recording. So here's a question. When I set Screencastify to record desktop mm -hmm. and click record, mm -hmm. I get a query asking me if I want to share my entire screen mm -hmm. or the application window. I click application window and click share and nothing happens. I, th I always thought, cause I don't get that when I don't get that prompt. And so, <clears throat> but um, I did, I have seen it before and I thought it was like kind of double checking to make sure you don't want to do a tab. Like, are you sure you don't want to just stay on one tab or are you going to use your whole desktop? So I, I'm not too sure about what the difference is, but I always kind of thought, you know, instead of hitting browser tab, I hit desktop and then it's asking me one more time. Are you sure? You want to do your whole desktop, but but yeah, if you're hitting that uh, application, you know, the, just that app, and it's not working, just go to the full, just use the desktop, because you could always just stay on one screen, even if you say desktop. Um, Alisa, back to the annotations. What if uh -huh. you? Okay, here's another scenario, I guess. Mm -hmm. What if you're using a PD, PDF? Like, so let's say you have a PDF on your screen, mm -hmm. right, and then you want and then you use the annotations within the PDF to do oh. whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. and you're making a screencastify of that. Do you know what happens with the annotations in that case? Um, well, after the recording's done, you'll still have your annotations because it'll be on on the on the recording. But I don't believe it sticks to the PDF. You know, like if the PDF in another file, like just open it up again tomorrow. I don't believe that those annotations will still be there, but they will be there on your video. How about this question, Alisa? Can you go between showing your face and the slideshow? Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> yes, but I'm not on a computer. But okay, so I would, okay. I'll show you to the best of my ability. I'm on a computer, I don't have a webcam, but um, which is probably not the best thing on the Screencastify session. Note to self, I will definitely be on a, a computer that has a webcam next time. 
Um, so if I were on a computer this that had a webcam, this would I would be able to toggle this on and off. I would toggle it on. I would hit record. So my the screen would show up and my little face would go right here in the corner. And then um, the toolbars, the toolbar will come here. And then uh, if I don't want my face anymore, I would just click on that little camera on the toolbar and my face would go away. And then later on, if I want my face again to say goodbye or whatever it is, I'd hit the camera again and there's my face. So was that, was that the question? I'm sorry, <laughs> I kind of got lost in what I was saying. Um, I think that's the question. It sounds like maybe as you suggested, sort of going back and forth between mm -hmm. your face and then the slideshow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a couple of toolbar questions. Mm -hmm. um, and, or, and remind me, Elisa, where is system audio? System audio. Somebody's asking, what does system audio do? I hit Screencastify. And I hit the hamburger on the left-hand side. And then, so you have all these different other options here too. And, um, and I just hit options. It's kind of like the gear, it's like settings. And then um, just double make sure, when I did this one other time, it was clicked here. And I don't know why, but you always kind of want it to have a uh, save to Google Drive. And that was one of the things we, we talked about at the very beginning when you first set up your account. Uh, notifications, you know, you, you decide how you want to be notified. Here's that keyboard shortcuts. Here's the one I was telling you about where you have the view drawing tools shortcuts. So if you get rid of, <clears throat> excuse me, if you get rid of your um, toolbar, how do you get it back? So here's all the, see, you were right, Alt T, show and hide your toolbar. So if you um, don't, if you decide to enable having the toolbar there from the very beginning, but you remember, you memorized some of these um, shortcuts, you can start using it without even having the toolbar on your, um, if the toolbar is taking up too much uh, real estate on your screen, you can toggle back and forth using the tools just by shortcuts. So that's kind of interesting. Um, record settings. Here's that privacy. Oh, see, I didn't have to do this, but here it is. Here's a privacy issue thing. Um, is, is this what, was this what she said or the person said? Optimize my system audio, so maybe oh. if we can't find it right now, that's okay. We'll oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know that. exactly where that is, unless they can clarify exactly where they found that. Okay. So why don't we, um, um, why don't you continue, Elisa, okay. with your... All right. So now we're going down to download. Okay. So after you stopped recording, you're, you have all the options of sharing, and then below that, you have the options to download. So download, that will download straight into your computer. Pretty self-explanatory. Oops. Be nice if it's on percent. The next one is um, export as an MP4. I know what an MP4 is. Um, I don't know what I would, why I would export it as an MP4. And again, that might be maybe for websites or something. If somebody else can explain this more, um, this, when I clicked on this, this is what came up. So uh, I, I don't. I maybe just to have it as an MP4 on my computer. Um, I think if I download, maybe it'll download as a web.m, but if I want it actually as an MP4, then I would use this. Um, but, but again, I, I didn't use it, I haven't used it, so I don't really know. Um, export audio, um, I clicked on this and this is what happened, this is what came up, and um, you can um, download it as an MP3. So you can, if you were using, uh, if you were doing podcasts, or if you wanted to do a listening test or something and you just wanted some audio for your students, that might be a good way to do it. And then um, the last one is a, a GIF or a GIF. And uh, these are short clips that just loop. And we've seen, you know, you've seen a lot of them um, in social media and things, but they also have it um, for explanations for how to's. Um, so again, um, you wanna make sure that you have your microphone off because you probably don't want sound in the background. It probably would just be better to have silence. And then you just take a short clip. And so this is the one that we saw earlier and I just was gonna show you as an example. So they're showing you how to screencastify, more options, 
click on enable toolbar and it just repeats itself. It just goes back and it repeats the same instructions over and over again. That's what that is. So when you're using that, you want very short clips. They're not long screencasts. So this is, um, this is not, this is not one of the options that's in Screencastify, but I watched some really good videos um, on the screencastify.com website and um, there was a teacher. So they have two courses that you can take. And one is a master screen fast, uh, screencastify uh, certificate, and it's an hour. And you watch these videos, and you learn how to do the. And then you take a test, and if you get eighty percent, and then you demonstrate how you would use screencastify and send it to them, they'll they'll give you a digital badge, and then you you can get a certificate saying, hey, I I know how to use screencastify. So I did that, and uh, that was really really interesting. And then the second one, the second course is for like the genius course. And it's a little bit more in depth. And I tried to take it right away and I wasn't really too, I still really wasn't into the whole thing of Screencastify. So I didn't, I didn't do too well on the test. <clears throat> and so, um, but one of the, the sections was how you use uh, Keep with Screencastify. And I thought it was really interesting. And I don't know if a lot of, of you out there um, utilize Keep. Um, Melinda is huge on Keep. I know she's, she's, she includes it in a lot of her presentations because it's one of the u most universal tools that Google has throughout all the tools. And um, so I just wanted to share this real fast with you. So I don't know if you know this, but if you're on Google Slides, on the right-hand corner, you will see a yellow light bulb, and that's Google Keep. And if you're in uh, Sheets, Google Sheets, same thing. You'll see it on the right-hand side. You'll see Calendar. You'll see some of the same... Um, uh, icons on the right hand side and then this was email I'm in my email and I have a Google keep so and then it's on your phone too um, I don't remember ever installing it I think it just came when I had my phone I think I, I had a Google folder already in, installed in my phone and so it, it had keep in there um, but what keep does is kind of note-taking or you know just a, a to you can make to-do lists you can do many many things but what's cool about it is that you can do it on any platform. And then when you open up a different platform, you open up the keep and there it is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So for example, um, this was in email. I, I made a note to myself and then I opened it up and I made, oh, this was the other thing. So I made a note and I had a screencastify and it automatically opened in, it automatically saved in my keep notes because I had it opened. And so then when I went to um, my slides, it, it was there too. So I don't have to like, I didn't have to go jump through a lot of hoops to get to the same place. So it's, again, it's one of those rabbit hole things. I mean, <laughs> if it works for you and it, and it helps you, and, or if you were to use Keep, this is another way you can use Screencastify with that. If you're not using Keep right now, uh, if you're, you know, if you feel like you want to learn more about it, then there's tons of tutorials. All right, so real quick, let's take one minute to chat. So now that you know what it is and how to make a recording and how to make different ways to use it, how will you use it with your students and your colleagues? Please type it in the chat so I can get some sort of idea when I look back at this, um, how you feel like maybe you wanna start using it with students and colleagues. Maybe as they're typing, Anthony, if there's some questions I can um, answer them. Oh, are you, were you going to show us about the trimming? Oh, yes. And also a question, um, what is another question from Suzanne? What's the best way to stop your video so that stopping the video doesn't show up in the screencast? Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a really good question because I go through that too. Like having, like you're seeing me physically drag my mouse to the stop or the, um, two things you can do. You could not have the toolbar there and use the shortcuts. Just go through that shortcut and find out what the shortcut is to stop a video. Um, or you can, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you can at the end of your whatever you were recording before you hit stop, have a few seconds of pause, maybe one, one or two seconds of pause uh, of nothing. I'm sorry, of not pause. Don't pause it of nothingness and then end your video. And then when you want, you can trim the end of it so they don't see you actually um, physically moving your mouse to stop the video. Um, I've, I've, I've kind of played with that a little bit too because I
I get to the point where I kind of just, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to find, and because my computer was so slow, it's like taking a long time to get to the stop button to the options. And I, I was like, okay, I can trim this and I can make it like look nicer. But I was so tired last night. I said, oh, I don't think I'm going to do it. But yeah, there is a way. So let me, um, let's, let me exit out of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me open up a new slide. I don't know why, but we'll just do it this way. I'm going to start my screencast. <clears throat> and um, I'll have my recording. I'm going to record. Oh, here's that application window that she was talking about. So you can choose, I guess, I have another application open, so you can choose which ones you would like to talk about between. I just use this one all the time. <clears throat> okay, so let's see how we demonstrate maybe not having anybody see me actually stopping the video. So as I'm, you know, presenting, oh, OTAN, you know, we have our OTAN logo here, and you're going to type your title here, and this is where you would put the body of your slide. And I'm done, and I'm coming up here, and I'm clicking on this, and it's taking a long time, but it's still screening, and then I finish that. And, you know, so you actually got to see like two seconds of me, you know, going through and, and finishing the, the video. So here, it, it automatically plays me actually stopping the video Here's me. so as i'm you know presenting oh otan you know we have our otan logo here and you're going to type your title here and this is where you would put the body of your slide and i'm done and i'm coming up here and i'm clicking on this and it's taking a long time but it's still screening <laughs> so you still saw all that and if you don't want that to appear on your screencast which i totally understand um this is where the trimming comes in, okay? So you can trim from the front end and from the back end. Now, I've had to play with this a little bit because it seemed that it was um, hit or miss about whether or not it trimmed, and it wasn't as user-friendly, but once it worked, it was great. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what it is is I play the video again. Okay, so let's see how we demonstrate maybe not having anybody so see me was actually okay. stopping the video. So as I'm, I'm you know, presenting, oh, over, and I'm clicking on okay. so I come done, here. and I'm coming up here, and I'm okay. clicking so on I don't want this, all that in there. Long so time, I have to go back, screen, and, I look at the screen, and I'm coming seconds. up here, and okay. I'm clicking. So I don't want that in there. So I'm, if you look over here on the timer, it's, it's the total is 26 seconds and I'm at 22 and I don't really want that. I'm gonna move this back and check and see what, at what time do I want this to here? And I'm, okay, so I'm gonna move it a little bit more. And I'm done. And okay, so now I'm saying, okay, at 20 seconds, I don't need all of this. Yeah, I don't want all this. So I'm going to take my scissors. And again, th this was trial and error because I, I couldn't quite remember if I was doing this right. In my head, I should go here to 20 seconds. And I'm done. And I'm coming. Oh, and there's a little bit more because I still saw it going up to the top. And I'm done. And okay, I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm being a little anal here. Slide. And I'm done. Okay, so, I, and, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim now. Remember, it's 26 seconds. If I'm trimming up to 19, I should have the end result be 19 seconds. Let's see if it works. Okay. I oh, It says, are you sure? I don't check this because I want to make sure every time. So I, I leave that on there. I don't know why. Okay, so let's oh, see how we demonstrate so maybe seconds. not having anybody see so me after your slide. And I'm done. And I'm done. <laughs> so you can go back and, you know, play around with the timings and such. So it, it actually works. So I'm, I'm really glad because that would have been embarrassing. But so you have your video. I, you know, you stopped your video. You, you stopped video. And this comes up automatically. It's saved to drive. And you go through now and you listen to see 
you know, how much do you want to chop off from the end and from the beginning? So one of my suggestions yesterday was maybe if you want a clean start and a clean finish, hit, hit record, silence for a second or so, record, 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 silence for a second or so, stop recording. And then that way, when it comes up, you can hear where it's a good place to cut in the front and at the back end. And then that way, um, you'll, you know, you'll have a, a nice clean video. Now, um, and, but be careful what it, that warning sign was that be careful once you hit, you know, save trimmings, it cuts it off, and you don't get it back again. So be sure that, you know, wherever your scissors are, that's where you want to finish that video or start that video. How was that? And Elisa, also um, in the, so we're looking right now at the free version. So yes. you said, I think that you can only trim at the beginning and you can't mm -hmm. trim in the middle, right? Correct. Yeah. Premium, $29 a year. If I had, if I, if I was watching this video and right here, I so messed up. As I'm, I'm yeah. like, oh, I totally messed up here. I didn't really mean that. They would have some other scissors right here and right here. And I could like scroll and say from here to here I want out <laughs> so um and it would it would cut that little middle section out and then splice it back together again so if that if you do have the premium version and you you get that if you make a mistake pause again pause for like a second so that you have a place where you can splice it and it's it's effortless instead of like and I'm it and then here we go again right so it doesn't splice in a weird weird place so, okay, so let, here's a previous question. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, somebody has a video on their phone, mm -hmm. so they save that video from their phone to Google Drive, mm -hmm. okay? Then the person made a webcam video and also saved that to Drive. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they put those two things together? Yeah, you have to purchase the premium because then you can merge two videos. That was one of the, that's the benefit. That's one of the benefits of the premium is that you can merge multiple videos together to make one video. Okay. So yeah, otherwise, otherwise, yeah, otherwise watch, watch your video, the, the, the uploaded video from the phone, play that and then screencastify it and, and with a webcam and talk to talk about the video while you're while you're watching the video. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, um, and Alisa, can you clarify, um, because you've, you've been going back and forth between calling it a screencast and a video. <laughs> yeah. so, so I think um, there's a couple, maybe a couple people who are, um, you know, have used yeah. make, or have made videos before, are a little bit confused between, is there a difference between a screencast and a video or yes. how do you, okay, so can you, yeah. can you clarify that for us? Yeah, video is the, the end product, right? You have your, uh, oh, and I also say recording, which is the same thing too. So video can be anything. It could be a YouTube video, you know, th those are all videos. A screencast is, um, you know, actually you recording whatever it is you would record, whether it's the webcam selfie video, or um, you commenting on a person's work, or you explaining how to do something, those are all screencasts. So once you, and I say screencast binds, but they're actually screencasts because you can make screencasts with other tools as well. So um, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I apologize that I keep flipping back and forth between my verbiage, but, um, but in my head, it makes sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so a video is anything, and then the end result is a screencast. Okay, and Alisa, there was a, a couple of requests. Uh, could you just show us again mm -hmm. the, the trimming, um, how you handle the trimming again? Sure. It doesn't seem to be very, um, I mean, just what you've been showing us so far, it doesn't, you don't have the kind of precision that you have in other programs, so. Probably. Can you, <laughs> can yeah, you show us again how you go yeah. about it? Well, and like I was saying too, it was kind of hit or miss because I've done that the same procedure and it would still say 26 seconds. Like it didn't, it said save trimmings and it didn't save the trimming. And so I kind of had to play around with it. So just the fact that it actually trimmed where I wanted it to was a miracle. Um, so again, you know, free is free, I guess maybe is kind of what I can say. Um, 
and I don't know if it's more precise if you have the premium or not because I don't have it. But um, I, I thought it was kind of a cool, you know, at least a little gadget that you can use. Um, okay, so I have my video. I'm just going to pretend. Our Oaktown logo here, and you're going to type your title here. And this is where you would put the body of your slide. Okay, and I want to stop it right there. So I'm at 18 seconds. If you look over here in the left-hand corner on the bottom, you'll see this is the total, and this is where I'm at right now. So I'm happy finishing my video at 18 seconds. So I'm going to take my little scissors and I'm going to move it to 18 seconds. And body of your slide. Okay, and then it'll, it, it jumps back a little, it rewinds a little bit and goes so you can hear where it will actually start and I mean stop. And so you can, you know, manipulate your scissors a little bit, but I'm pretty good there. So I'm gonna save my trim and it says, be careful if you trim it, it's not coming back. And we'll say, okay. And that's exactly what I, uh, this is my conversation I have every time. So, and then here it is. Okay, so let's see how we if demonstrate end, maybe not having I, anybody see my fast forward body of your slide. And it finished. Okay. So, I, uh, again, I didn't do, I didn't do what I said what I recommended, but yeah, I would recommend just having just a second or two of a pause so that you can make a really clean cut, a uh, good trim, and it's not awkward in sound or movement. So um, that might help you a little bit if you want to make kind of clearer screen. And Elisa, somebody um, comment, commented that with the premium version, mm -hmm. you actually could, um, if you did your snip incorrect you could actually redo it <laughs> oh, see <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know you guys maybe 29 dollars a year is worth it yeah yeah that i mean seems like i mean i like all the free stuff but every time i hear about some premium stuff i'm like ooh, that sounds kind of good too you know it's just more stuff to do <laughs> more stuff to learn alisa a question what if you okay so if you have well, the question is, can you open the original file in Screencastify and trim it then? And I'm wondering if Suzanne actually means like just a video file you have sitting in your drive, for example, and then kind of edit it, that video? No, yeah, because it's not an edit, it's not a video editing, it's a screencast editing. So like if I had a YouTube video and I pulled it up, well, okay, that's not true, okay. Okay, if I had a YouTube video that was not ever in Screencastify, I, I don't think I would be able to trim it. But if I had a screencast, a screencast from screen, if I made something from Screencastify and I uploaded it, published it as a YouTube, I could go back into my drive and find that video and trim it. I mean, and edit it then. Yeah, so it's, it's not an outside source. You have to use it within Screencastify. So I think, so if you have the screencast, you can, you can go ahead and. At any time. Yeah, I can go back to my it. drive. Yeah, I can go back to the drive. And um, if I go to my recordings, I could take any of these and, and trim any of those. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of comments from Suzanne, but I think she's got, she's got it figured out. Yeah, no, that's great. I love. I like that Suzanne asks a lot of questions because I sh I think that a lot of other people have the questions also, but either they're afraid or they don't want to ask it. So other people are like nodding, like, "Yeah, oh, good. I'm so glad." So please keep them coming. Um. Okay, I'm not sure. Amy, so I'm not sure what Amy said. I just tried that. I'm not sure what that refers to. Maybe the But if you, but the, she said, can't edit it once it's in my drive. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me, uh, uh, let's try. I, I haven't ever done it I, in my head. I assumed I could do it, but yeah, maybe I misspoke. Um, let me go back to, let me just pull one up. Um, I don't know. Okay. So this one is the same one that we were just working on. It's in my drive. So I'll just pull it back up. I can't hear the sound though. That's weird. So I'm at 14 seconds. Yes, I want to trim. And it's at 14 seconds. But I'm not sure. Oh, because I didn't unmute. 
anybody see me actually stopping the video. So as I'm, you know, presenting, oh, OTAN, you know, we have our OTAN logo here, and you're going to type. So I went back, oh, maybe, oh, because she said that she found it in her drive, because I just went to my recordings. Maybe that's, you know, because I'm still in Screencastify. Maybe yeah, and, she's, and she mm -hmm. said also, um, I, I saw a different screen than what I'm what um, she's saying right now. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't the editing screen. Oh, okay. Let me. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Let me. Um, let me go to my drive. So he, this is my drive. I'm in drive. I'm going to pull up a video. Oh, and I think I just answered my own question. I think I, I think I realized what happens. Okay. So. Um, I, I forgot who it was that asked the question, but um, yeah, if you're in Drive, you don't have the editing tools. But if you're in Screencastify, if you come over here, you should have that video in my recordings and it's in Screencastify. So again, like you wouldn't be able to pull a video out from out of Screencastify to edit it. And that's what it essentially is. So if you are in Screencastify, go to your My Recordings, and then you can tr uh, trim that, that video. Okay, and I think Amy also realized that as well. Okay, great. Oh, well, I'm glad, because that helped um, me too. Another question about captions. Can you add captions at all? Um, I, I, I've read, I have heard it somewhere, but I don't know if that's maybe a premium thing. Um, let's, let's check, let's find out. Let's try it. Can I add captions to a screen by video? The use of captions are incredibly helpful for all students. Luckily, it's easy to quickly add them to Screencastify videos. Add captions on Google Drive, create. Add captions on Google Drive, create a transcript, file go to Google Drive. OK. Didn't quite understand what that said, but so it kind of sounds like yes, but and Elisa, I just mm -hmm. um, that um, the link that or the page you're looking at, I just put the link to that in the ch uh, chat. If people want to copy and paste that, and then they can go look at that captions page directly as well. Great, yeah. So it it looks like it does, but I, I'm. I'm not looking into it very And Mario, closely. yeah, Mario suggests um, upload it to YouTube and mm -hmm. then YouTube um, can add the captions. Mm -hmm. um, he says also change it to Spanish too. Oh. But it sounds like you can't do it in Screencastify. And I think that oh. that's the page you just showed us, I think is um, maybe you need to work outside of Screencastify to, to get that. Oh, maybe and, and insert it. Yeah, and the thing that I've been working with with YouTube also is that one of the settings is that it automatically captions it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the captions, um, it, you know, because we're most of our, I think the majority of us are, are um, ESL teachers, you know, we perhaps speak more clearly, probably slowly. So the captioning is actually pretty good, but it doesn't put any grammar. It doesn't, it doesn't put periods, it doesn't stop at sentences. It just keeps running as you're speaking. So, um, what I have been doing, I didn't do this for a very long time until, and so I probably have about 11 videos up that just have the, the captioning, but I actually put in subtitles now. So I go in and man, YouTube makes it very, very easy to make um, subtitles. And that way I control, um, you know, the capitals and the periods and, and then, and then I hit, I just hit the button and it times it for me. So, and that's a whole YouTube thing. <laughs> Again, I'm, that's going down the rabbit hole, but but yeah, if you're if you want um, uh, some captioning or subtitles um, that are more accurate than what's what's automatically given in YouTube, um, it's a really good option. So I've been doing that. So I probably have another you know like ten or fifteen videos that I've been transcribing, and um, but it's very very easy. They make it user friendly uh, creating it. So um, let me go to my presentation real quick. I. I don't think I have very much left. I have, we have 20 minutes. So I'm, let me just go through and see what else more I have. Oh, so here's the thing I was talking about with my account. I went back to screencastify.com because really once you have it, you know, once you have the icon, 
you don't really have to come back to the website to ever use it. Whatever, wherever you are on the internet, you're always able just to click on this and start a screencast. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm going to go back to screencastify.com and see what else they have, you know, some helpful hints or some tutorials or, you know, what other cool things do they have. And man, I found a lot of really helpful resources and they make a ton of, of videos, screencasts of their product. So, um, you know, it's really helpful and they're very short. So you can, you know, watch one or two and not be too inundated, inundated, <laughs> um, and, and things. So um, for me, um, I, I got to screencastify.com. Um, these are your options. Um, for school, you can go down, you click on it, you go down to resources, and they have a Screencastify ebook and a Screencastify Google Apps. And so I, I copied the links and I made new links just for myself. But if you want, take a picture of this um, and, you know, now that we have so much free time, um, you know, lounging around in our pajamas and, you know, eating bonbons, um, you can, you know, look through these ebooks on, you know, different ways that teachers have used Screencastify or, you know, using them with Google Apps. I just found, I found this at 1130 last night. So I really haven't even looked through it, but I thought it was a good resource. Um, I'm going to change the screen. So if you want to take a picture, five, four. Three, two, one. And then um, here's those options. To, oh, the keyboard shortcuts that we talked about. Um, so you're going to go into the hamburger options, and then they have the shortcuts for you. So this, this is just a few of the shortcuts. But if you want to kind of learn some of them, some of them that might be really helpful for you, and you don't have to have that toolbar um, on your screen all the time. That would be good, especially if you if it's hovering over something that's important on your screen. All right, so we've got show and tell, and um, we have some very brave um, uh, participants out there that sent me their Screencastify last night or this morning, and I asked them if they would mind if I shared them, and I thought that I would just share them with you so you can see what your fellow participants did um, for their homework. So um, uh, there's no, uh, we're in a safe place. There's no judging, um, you know, please uh, positive comments um, and let them know how much you appreciate what they did. So here's Lynette. Hi class, I wanna show you how to use my website to go to the spelling games and practice your spelling in a fun way. So here we are at my website and I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm going to click spelling. When I click on spelling, it takes me to my spelling page and I wanna click on spelling city. It's the first link. That takes me to my spelling city page and you'll see many lists here. Pick the irregular verbs any one of these, and click on games. When you click on games, make sure you're looking at free games. There should be about nine free games. You can use this to practice your spelling, to test your spelling, and to play games. So here's a, how it can teach you. I'm gonna go here and hit play. And there's my list. So if I want to know how to spell the word, I can click on it. Went, W-E-N-T, went. I went to the party but left early. Went. So that's the past of go. It gives you the spelling and also in a sentence. And then I want to play some games. So I'm going to go again, click free. You don't want to pay for anything. And there's many games here. One is a word search. So if I click here, I'm going to look for those words. Hit play. Welcome to word search. Let's search.
Search the grid for your words. When you find one, click and drag to highlight it. Okay, so I want to go and find my words. This is great for my spelling. I'm going to click here. There's went. Went. Okay, and you have a few minutes to do that. So that's a fun game. Let's see what else we can play. Again, free. There's the hang mouse that we play in class. So I'm going to fast forward this real quick. I just want to get to the, oh, of course. The, the end of Lynette's is priceless. And I hope I can do this without um, clicking out of it again. Hi class, I want to show you how to use my website. Get ready for the test. Oh. And it will tell you how you did. So I can't see your homework here. So when you finish, you just want to send me an email and tell me how long did you study your spelling? I hope you have fun with it and have a great day. Okay, so um, that was Lynette's video and it's like so incredible. Um, and so some of the things that I noticed or actually, I mean, if you want to make some comments about what you noticed, um, you know, with her video, um, I don't think, I can't tell or not, but I don't think that she's even using a headset, um, like earbuds and a microphone. I think she's using the, the audio from her computer and it's clear and, and that surprises me. So, I mean, that's great. I mean, if you have a computer that, that can pick up sound um, that clear without an echo, more power to you. I mean, I, I tend to always use um, a microphone, uh, you know, uh, earbuds with the microphone. Um, and then also the audio from her computer clear and loud when they did the spelling w e n t it was very loud so if a student is watching this video there was no chance that they didn't hear that that audio so i, I thought those i thought those were really great um anthony are there some comments about the video that we can share awesome fantastic <laughs> i agree really great <laughs> she did there is a question about if uh, lynette wrote a script at all and um, and how many takes that, you know, was this, was this the first time or did she try it a couple times? I'm not sure if Lynette's in the room or not. Maybe she could just put it in the chat or. Yeah, and um, uh, I, I talked to a couple of different people and I don't want to confuse her, but I did talk to someone that said it took them 11 times um, because they, I think they said that they had to keep stopping when they changed tabs or something. And so we kind of discussed that a little bit, but I don't know if that was Lynette or not. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, again, <laughs> if you can do it in one take, oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it takes me, uh, sometimes it takes me a few takes. It, you know, it depends on how kind of perfect I want it or, you know, the best it can be. Um, if it's kind of, if I'm in a rush or if it's just something that's not as important for me to have a perfect quote unquote uh, screencast, I, you know, I'm doing one take and I'm shooting it off. <laughs> um, but we'll yeah. Say, yeah, I could, you know, I'm not sure whether Lynette used a script or not, but I think at least to have a plan yes. of how you're going to proceed through mm -hmm. from start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, and also I noticed that, um, you know, people had a lot of questions, or not a lot, but people were asking about, you know, or commenting on the free version you only get up to five minutes right right but you really should i mean if you're thinking about wanting to create longer than five minute videos mm -hmm. um that actually might be a little bit of a tr you know some trouble because we want to make sure we you know sometimes it's better to think about it in chunks for example yes so maybe you just have like a really short how-to on something and you know maybe in a second short how-to on something and you're not creating these long 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 videos the five minutes really helps you to edit in a way right because it keeps it helps keep you very succinct in your presentation i totally agree and, and yeah i made that suggestion yesterday to some participants about yeah exactly instead of having this really long it's just to divide whatever your long thing is into maybe three and then make you know the thirds and then that way um uh, students aren't having to really sit through a, a longer video also which you know if they only wanted the end part of it then you know they could fast forward but and again the longer the video the longer it takes to upload um, or download if they're you know if the students are watching it um, but yeah I, I, I totally agree um, 
yeah, so this is, you know, before you even record, I'm like, if I was Lynette, I would be going through, clicking through the steps so I know what was coming up next. So I knew, even if I didn't have a script, then I knew what was coming up next. So I knew what to talk about. So it wasn't such a surprise. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, let me just double check where we're at. Okay, so I've got 10 minutes left. So this, I have two, we have two more. And um, this one, um, <laughs> and this is incredible. This is the first one I saw and I literally got tears in my eyes. It was, I was so impressed and I got to learn a foreign language, so. Hola, aquí estamos ayudándoles para abrir su cuenta de Google desde el teléfono y para que entran en su clase de Google. Aquí tenemos que buscar su clave. La maestra te ha dado una, una clave de cinco, seis letras o números. Es la clave para que entras en la, en la clase. Apúntalo. Luego, hay que bajar la aplicación del Google Classroom en su teléfono. Si tiene ya un, una cuenta de Gmail, ya puede entrar aquí con su username y su password. Si no tiene un email, un Gmail, ahora tenemos que crear una cuenta. Primero. Ok, so I'm going to stop that real quick. <coughs> um, so, yeah, if you have comments for this or questions, um, please put it up in the chat. Um, and um, things. One of the things I did notice was the, the camera. Um, so there wasn't a camera available, I assume, um, for, the, for the device that, that you're on. Um, and, but I'm not sure why it shows up here because I don't have a camera on mine either, and I, but nothing shows up. So I, I don't know where, why this is coming up, um, unless it's one of those toggle things. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I just, I love how it's step-by-step step. and, um, even though, you know, there's quite a few slides, it was only about two minutes, I think, uh, it's, it's about three minutes, 2.58, so it's, it's still a very short, uh, video, but it's a step-by-step step process so that their students can watch it and go along with it step-by-step by step. By step. I, I just thought that was incredible. Um, I have one more, um, I have one more show and tell and then, um, and then just an ending slide and then I'm done. So let me um, move on forward. So this is from Donna Barr, um, my fellow GGUSD um, uh, teacher. And um, she, I believe, I, I don't, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe that she took a screencast of her PowerPoint presentation. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and see what she did. Uh, Pronunciation of regular past tense verbs and adjectives with ed endings. Asked. Baked. Brushed. Cooked. Cracked. Crashed. Dance. Dressed, dropped, escaped, finished, fixed, guessed, helped, hoped. So I'm going to stop that real quick and um, I think what she did was brilliant because in her on her website, um, eslamerica.us, um, everything has sound, um, and so uh, she has a lot of PowerPoints on there. But unfortunately, if students um, want to access those and they don't have PowerPoint, they're kind of stuck. So I think what her idea is, and Donna, you can put in the chat if I'm misspeaking, um, but I think she wanted to do a screencast of her PowerPoints so that now all students um, can access um, the information. Um, and 
you know, so to be more accessible for, for all of our students, uh, no matter what platform they're using. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a great idea that, uh, you know, taking something that you've already done and then just re, you know, recycling it into something different and new and um, available for everybody. Um, I don't know if, if, if Donna can write in the chat if it's going to go too fast or not, but, um, but I think that's such a good idea. Um, why, why reinvent the wheel? Just use what you already have and then just make a video of it. Um, let me move forward. Okay, so here's me. <laughs> See, I could turn the beginning. Congratulations, you did it. I am so happy for you. I know that you're gonna be great using Screencastify and your students are going to love it. Thank you again for coming to my presentation. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. I appreciate you guys coming and, um, and I hope you learned one thing and you're taking it with you and you're gonna able, you're able to use it with your students and your colleagues. And Elisa, um, yes, there's, there does seem to be interest in a Screencastify for Beginners Part 3. Okay. So um, maybe... I'll take a look at the comments yeah, and see later. Yeah, we can, and we can discuss and discuss and see about mm -hmm. maybe a Part 3. So. Sure.